Hello, our friends. Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. And this was our uh, Patreon exclusive yesterday, 22 hours ago. Again, the exclusives go up on Patreon. I'd say twice a week is typical, sometimes more, um, occasionally less, but every week exclusives going up on Patreon you won't find anywhere else. Um, I just had to share this, you know, this is a beautiful structure. Look at the colors. Look at the colors. And this is part of a complex. This is Menakshi Aman uh, Temple. It's dedicated to Shiva and Shakti. There is a, a legend behind it. And when you look at this, you just think, why aren't we building things like this today? You know, we, we talk about Tartaria. We talk about um, all the beautiful buildings that we see in, in various places, you know, that were destroyed. And you got to wonder why, because the architecture is so beautiful. Then you look at something like this, and this blows most of those away by a mile. And you got to wonder, why don't we do things like this with the grandeur and the attention to detail this is part of a complex it is uh, steeply rooted in mythology as well as you can see this is again it's part of a complex here you see an outer wall and you see these entrances through these pillars these structures which I have seen more than one person say that when you look at this type of structure in specific what they are doing is they are remembering vimanas and vimanas again are ships uh, they are vehicles and it was just well known that there were extraterrestrials always amongst us and there were beings that lived inside the earth inner earth beings with advanced technology there are also beings that come from other planets other star systems and would come and live here openly when we are not in a kali yuga period all this is just a it's a given it's just common knowledge just common knowledge and some of the things that we say well there's no way they carve that by hand with chisels there's 30,000 statues in this complex. 30,000 statues. Yeah, you think, you know, that this was carved by uh, uh, typical hands <laughs> that we have here right now? 30,000 statues in this complex that was... Now, when you look at the histor historical viewpoint that we're given from the Western world... You know, they will say most of this was started about 1,400 years ago. It has been rebuilt and touched up because it has been uh, the object of destruction. And this, by the way, when you look to uh, where it's located, this is in southern India right here. And I wanted to bring this part up again because when you listen to the locals and you, you, you listen to... What they say, they say that this temple was created by su survivors of Kumari Kandam. Well, what's Kumari Kandam? It's the land that was here. It, lied be it laid between Africa, Australia, Indonesia, and, and India. And you know, we might look at it as the land of Lemuria in, in our Western uh, history. Lemuria. Oh, so this was actually built by the Lemurians. So that changes everything. 30,000 statues. Yeah, because, you know, again, this is an advanced culture. Advanced culture that still maintained extraterrestrial technology. Mm. I'm looking at the, the detail of the statues and the size of these uh structures and they're so huge it's like how how do they get everything so precise and to get it standing and to get it to hold its integrity <laughs> in this way uh, I don't think this could be repeated now and 
I still don't think we ask enough questions. You know, when we're going to school to be indoctrinated, we do not ask enough questions. And I think part of the problem is, as adults now, we're not demanding enough answers. We're just not. And I, I, I am like this because I believe the answers are out there. And, um, you know, you can't demand answers for something that people truly have no idea about. But you can if the answers are out there and they're just being kept from you. And uh, by another another layer of civilization or people who feel that they are above you or better than you because they know these things. But yeah, I mean, this is just absolutely incredible. I think we should demand more answers from those who are so-called in charge, you know, from our professors at the universities and uh, uh, many, many other people who who might be in positions of power that do know this stuff, they need to fess up. I mean, it's only fair. We deserve to know where we come from. And I love these stories because when when these beings are talking about themselves, they know where they come from. They know uh, where their lineage is. They know where their higher self is. And th these are all the hall hall hallmarks of like a, a 5D society to me. Yes, absolutely. You know, this hallway of, of a thousand statues uh, and literally um, people have counted and, and counted 985 in this one hallway. Really attention to detail like we just don't see and, and it's gorgeous. And, you know, again, this has been unfortunately subjected to destruction and then being rebuilt. Uh, there is a lot of history here in southern India I find very, very interesting because, again, what we call the Aryan invasion, uh, what was that really? Uh, well, you know, there's been <laughs> redos. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of redos. And who is the subject of redo? Uh, the redos are targeting uh, the most technologically advanced people on the planet that have the ability to break away from the system uh this system is is one that you know can't have that so it, it uses uh these periods of um rampant destruction to always kind of send us back technologically into more of a stone age but there's these leftover traces that they they can't obliterate at all and still leave a certain amount of um, population there when you look at it it's just fabulous it's just amazing uh you know the layout the design thirty thousand statues and then the line of thinking is that this is all carved uh from basically one big rock complex and you'll find that a lot in uh india in in greater india um mahabharata literally translates to greater india as as india of ancient times was much larger and india in reality in my mind is is basically a connection to lemuria and mu so what we have is a connection to a time that was before the uh, current power structure was in place. That was a time when we saw beings that were similar to us, but a lot of beings that were not similar to us. And we knew they came from various places. Uh, again, look to the attention to detail with these statues. Okay, so, so many heads and so many arms. Did they really have those? No. Uh, what this is, is a remembrance of, the, it's saying these beings understand their past lives. They still maintain um, memories of all their past lives and their different incarnations. And many times when we see in uh, the Hindu culture that this person was a incarnation of Shiva or this is an incarnation of Parvati which again Shiva and Parvati Shiva and Shakti Shiva and Shakti in one sense is divine masculine divine feminine uh, in another sense when when you're talking about Shiva and Parvati why would you use Parvati instead of Shakti because that's an individual that's more in a particular uh, energy stream ultimately there's one consciousness uh, which is understood but it, it branches out into these different consciousness streams 
And the realization is that there are beings that know who their higher selves are. There are beings that remember all their incarnations, or at least a vast majority of them. And, and that is obviously something that would make them very wise, because can you imagine having uh, at, at your disposal, let's look at it a little bit differently, all the skill set of every um, one of your ancestors, you know, because we have all have family that might be uh, really good at something, not so good at this. Can you imagine being able to go through your entire DNA lineage and, you know, have the, the, the skill set of your great grandfather on your mother's side, uh, great great grandmother over on the other side? It would be just all this knowledge that you could pull from at any time. You would have the knowledge of a god. Well, that's why they were called gods again, because their knowledge was so vast and their understanding of how the universe worked is so vast. As we see these depictions, why are they depicting them as green and blue? Because they actually were. <laughs> they were, you know, skin colors that we are not used to. And at the same time, they're very, very humanoid, and they come from different places. Absolutely. You know, these are very real beings. Look at this hallway. Look at the grandeur, the colors. This is a, it's a celebration. When you see buildings like this, it's celebrating life. This is from a totally different time period, a totally different time period than we've grown up in. It feels extravagant. It feels uh, just really kind of incredible. Well, you know, these these were happy times and, you know, our our knowledge base was different. We understood that life is is a, a gift and it's to be explored and it's to be enjoyed and it's a learning experience. It's also uh, not our typical state. You know, we as the birds coming right to the window there, um, we, we spend more time disembodied out of these 3D bodies than in them. So, you know, this is a blessing, even in the, the most hardest times. And I know that can be hard for people to comprehend. Well, it can because times are so difficult right now and, and, and the struggle is very, very real. Um, but I really wanted to point out, you know, the celebration of life and the celebration of being here in the 3D to bring things into a manifested state. And all, all of what you see here started with a thought, just a thought. And that's really fun to ponder because someone was able to think this all the way into existence. And could you imagine the information and the data <laughs> that you would have to have at your disposal to make buildings this big and to make them stand and to make them, you know, structurally sound? I mean, where did this come from? This came from, it had to have come from hundreds of lifetimes of building and understanding structures and understanding consciousness uh, to get this to come to the forefront and you know come into the 3d and it all starts from a thought so you know you guys just sit on that and ponder that and realize that your manifesting abilities are powerful and it just starts right there in your head legends say minakshi aman temple was created by migrants from a lost continent Perhaps that's just a story, but the unique and monumental towers, their brightly colored sculptures, mythological figures could make you believe the temple comes from a storybook. Once a year, the temple ups its game as it attracts over a million visitors to attend a sacred marriage celebration and a chariot procession for the angered god who almost did not make it. And basically, it's, the story ties in again to Shiva and Shakti, Shiva and Parvati. And again, it's um, as, as we were doing this, what, what came to Cindy was, as, w as I was speaking to you about, it's not that this is literally, well, it's not that it's literally the Shiva and the Shakti, or Shakti again, divine feminine, in the incarnation as Parvati, because again, uh, Shiva is part of a trinity of Brahma, Shiva, and also Vishnu. There's a, f a feminine tr trinity, a divine feminine counterpart to the divine masculine counterpart. 
in uh, Parvati, Lakshmi, and Sarasvati. And what we have here is, again, the understanding of the higher self, perhaps understanding of, of up to the penultimate uh, higher self in some ways. As, as we all have higher selves, and we, we have higher selves that have had myriads of experiences, uh, even though this particular uh, soul, if you want to use that term, may have had only a certain number, a handful uh, of incarnations as a human previously. Uh, the higher self has, in many cases, multiple lives going on, and often not even just on one planet. So this is part of what's understood in Hinduism. And also, again, Buddhism comes out of Hinduism. And then we also have um, you know, many other branches that have branched off at different times. This is, again, in my mind, this is just leftover knowledge that goes back before the Kali Yuga. It goes back before the Kali Yuga, goes back to Dwapara and, and other uh, information that was given to us by benevolent beings way before the control system came in. This temple was also uh, partially destroyed by, uh, m well, Islam. And, you know, in its expansion, it, the, the Muslims came in and were trying to destroy and wipe this out. And again, they were being used by the control system to wipe out some more of our ancient history, the history of Lemuria and Mu and Tertaria, and et cetera, et cetera. It's fascinating to see, again, that this is all about <laughs> showing that we were never alone and in fact we we always had visitors from other places here with us this is part that has been wiped out they were always here with us many different visitors from many different places this is why i always go back to uh the hindu um, stories as being the stories that kind of give this all away the most clearly with the most examples because yes we can also find this if we look to the indigenous people in other parts of the globe the only difference with the the Hindu um, tradition is is that there are just a myriad of scriptures that still have all this info uh, in place mm. it's it's a lot of fun to really dive deep if you want to Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just, you know, it's fascinating. And, you know, again, this is claiming that this temple was was started about 2,500 years ago. Um, now, more than that, uh, according to some sources, far less than that, according to uh, the historians of today in the Western world, Western culture, by the survivors of Lemuria. Kumari, Kandem, a lost continent. It's not here anymore. And, you know, they say identified as the Tamil equivalent of Atlantis. So, you know, again, the historical records don't agree with this. But this is really uh, the case. It's pretty obvious. 30,000 statues. 30,000. And what a complex it is. And also, these are the shapes that what you're seeing right here this kind of pyramidal uh, pillar type of shape of particular vimanas of certain uh, groups of ships that came down in better times before the uh, invasion of that which we would call the Asuras or uh, the Anunnaki Ijiji invasion. Uh, indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a celebration of life which we don't have um, you know, we, we don't have that type of thing today where, you know, you see these grand structures and we marvel over how could they possibly build them? Why would they build them? And, you know, again, there's, there's not necessarily enough profit in it for this society of today. You know, you'd be amazed to know what's, what's right around the corner, what's right under our feet or what's right over our heads. Sometimes it would 
it probably sear your socks off and other times it would, <laughs> it would absolutely thrill you i know this one was a fun one uh, you don't expect that but this guy here he, oh my gosh he's so animated yeah look at his expressions again there is one spirit and and you know again if you go to the native tradition the great spirit just that simple you know mother earth father sky doesn't have to be any more dramatic dogmatic than that indeed as always guys thanks for your support source bless and namaste namaste